In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may I welcome you here uh, to St. Margaret's. It's great to see you for this service of Holy Communion. And welcome too to those of you who are joining us online today. It's great to have you with us as well. So let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Let us pray. O God, who hast prepared for them that love thee such good things as pass man's understanding, pour into our hearts such love toward thee, that we, loving thee above all things, may obtain thy promises which exceed all that we can desire, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the sixth chapter of the epistle of the Apostle Paul to the Romans, beginning at the eighth verse. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the 22nd chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. And Jesus answered and spake again to them in parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. And he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which were bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Please come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. For when the king heard thereof, he was wroth and sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw that there was a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither? not having a wedding garment, and he was speechless. 
Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Please stand for the creed. Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It is uh, marvellous to have you all here, and I'll repeat the welcome I gave at the start of the service, and particularly exciting to have Grace uh, back with us who has been so unwell and is now almost recovered, but we can't keep her away from the altar. It's wonderful to have you back. And you've brought Pauline as well, just to make sure you get back to the office safely, which is lovely to see you both there in your normal seats. Whatever else we can learn from the extraordinary parable which was set for the Gospel this week, we are reminded of the sheer generosity of Almighty God that we have experienced in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus under, under, underlines uh, the generosity right from the start. The kingdom of heaven, he says, that kingdom that I've come to proclaim is like a wedding banquet arranged by a king for his son. Every word in the scriptures underlines his generosity. It was royal. It was a banquet, not just a supper. And it was a special occasion indeed to honour a very special person, the king's son. As of the custom at the time, those who were on the original guest list would have already received and accepted an earlier invitation a kind of first century save the date, I suppose we would call it. And we join the process here in our gospel today when the second invitation uh, went out, saying the banquet was ready and the king would love you to come immediately. It was then that things began to go terribly wrong. Twice the original guests refused to come in spite of their earlier acceptances. The messages to Jesus' contemporaries, of course, would have been hauntingly clear. They were the people who his heavenly Father had first invited to be part of the kingdom of heaven. But when the moment came, when the king's son was among them, they decided against accepting the invitation. Those who heard this parable, 
but particularly the Jewish leaders, would have realized that he was speaking directly to them. They were God's first choice of guests. How could they at this stage refuse his invitation? Jesus was announcing the great wedding party of the kingdom of God to which his people had wanted and waited for so long. There's no indication that those who refused were doing anything intrinsically wrong. They were either looking after commodities or out in the agricultural se sector. Everyone would have understood their need for responsibility and constant involvement with their businesses. But they clearly had different priorities to God's priorities and were therefore going to miss out on the blessings that he had for them. And their decision instinctively makes us think about how much our own priorities and those of God are aligned at the moment. None of us here is particularly wicked, or at least you don't look as though you're particularly wicked, and I know you all and I know you're not. But all of us know how difficult it can sometimes be to juggle conflicting priorities. Most of us will have had to do this every day and every week. All of us will have known times when I'm sure I ought to take this decision, but the pressure is on me to do that. So today, as we reflect on this gospel, what might Jesus be inviting us to do today? Which of our priorities needs to be adjusted as we respond to God's amazingly generous love? And so let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. In our prayers today we pray for our nation and for the political turbulence through which we're passing. We pray for Ukraine and Hong Kong in the wider world and in our church we pray for the Lambeth Conference particularly praying for the Archbishop of Canterbury as he leads it. Among our own congregation we pray for Velda on the sudden death of her mother, for Michael as he mourns his sister, for Kevin for Joel and his family after the death of his father and for Elijah having had a serious heart attack at the end of last week remembering his wife and family as he undergoes major surgery today. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee to save and defend the rulers of the nations and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen that under her we may be godly and quietly governed. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all the clergy that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, 
give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers in thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. You that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him, Come unto me, all that travel and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Ah, we do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, 
who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. of Christ. Lord of Christ. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O almighty Lord and everlasting God, Vouchsafe, we beseech thee to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of thy laws and in the works of thy commandments, that through thy most mighty protection both here and ever we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.